The Old Testament lesson for this, the 23rd Sunday after the Pentecost, is written in the fourth chapter of Genesis, beginning at the first verse. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought the first fruits of his flock and of their fat portion. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. The Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. The epistle lesson is written in the fourth chapter of St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, beginning at the sixth verse. St. Paul writes, For I am ready, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which is written in the 18th chapter, the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the ninth verse. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing off would not lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. 
<clears throat> now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to them, saying, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child <clears throat> shall not enter it. Dear friends in Christ, <clears throat> The Cain and Abel story has been known to us ever since our Sunday school days. It's the story of the first murder, <clears throat> excuse me, and it is also <clears throat> an account of sacrifice, acceptable sacrifice and unacceptable sacrifice. <clears throat> so question, how does God determine whether a sacrifice is acceptable or not? Answer, he looks <clears throat> at the heart. Cain and Abel had different hearts when they brought their sacrifices to God. <clears throat> Cain brought his offering with a heart that was not right with God. Therefore, God rejected his sacrifice. Question, what kind of heart is not right with God? Answer, the kind of heart <clears throat> that just goes through the motions. You know, like, well, we've always done it that way before, and like, uh, because I have to, or because it's expected of me. We are told that <clears throat> Cain brought some of the fruit from the ground. What we are not told is instructive. We're not told that he brought the best of his crop. We're not told that he brought the first portion, like Abel, his brother. Neither did Cain offer up his sacrifice gladly to the Lord. <clears throat> like the unjust judge in last week's parable, Cain's heart had no regard for man nor for God. Cain's concern was not whether or not his, his sacrifice would be acceptable, but rather he was concerned that he might be shown up by his brother. Cain's pride took a hit. And so he became angry with his brother Abel. He hated his brother. And even that hatred that he had in his heart for his brother was in essence murder. We learn that from the Gospel of St. Matthew, from out of the heart proceeds murder, adultery, thefts, fornication, and the like. And in and in St. John's first epistle, he writes, Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder his brother? asks John. And then he answers his own question. Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Cain was all about Cain. His heart had nothing to do with God, and so his sacrifice was an evil sacrifice. It was unacceptable to God. God warned Cain about his anger, his evil anger, but Cain ignored and rejected the word of God. When a person does that, when a person ignores God and does not repent, he falls deeper into sin. Cain, having murdered his brother in his heart, then went on to commit premeditated murder, actual murder, actual taking of the life. And when God confronted him, Cain gives 
God an insolent answer, showing no remorse, no repentance. Who am I, my brother's keeper? Yes, yes, you are your brother's keeper. Question, what kind of heart is right with God making a sacrifice acceptable? Answer, the heart of faith. The heart of faith. All people, all people are by nature born unbelievers, enemies of God, alienated from God, unable to earn salvation. Children of sinners are born sinners. And if they are left to themselves, they are headed for hell. Faith is created and preserved by God. He does this through his word and his sacrament. He calls us, the Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel. The heart of an acceptable sacrifice believes in the triune God. It believes in Jesus Christ, the Savior. Through faith, a person has the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. The baptized believer is covered with the righteousness of Christ, a righteousness that was purchased and bestowed and acquired for all by his holy life, his innocent suffering and death. Righteousness is bestowed on us in Christ. Christ, the living Christ, who rose from the dead. The heart of faith grasps Christ, and so he is right with God. Because Jesus' sacrifice, because of that sacrifice, the sacrifice of believers is acceptable to God. Abel had, as you have, a heart of faith. Abel was brought to faith by God through the gospel of Genesis chapter 3, Verse 15, here in, already in Genesis, God gives the first promise of a Savior. And then that promise is repeated throughout the Old Testament until finally it is fulfilled when Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary. In, in, God, in Genesis 3.15, here's the promise. God is speaking to Satan. And he says to Satan, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Her offspring being Messiah, Christ. And he, Jesus, shall bruise your head. He will destroy Satan. And you shall bruise his heel. Heel. Yeah, Jesus will die, but he will not remain dead. He will rise again. Abel, along with his parents, believed this gospel, and they looked forward to the Savior who was to come. Abel's sacrifice of animals foreshadowed the coming of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, whose blood would atone for the sins of the whole world. God brought you and me to faith in holy baptism, and he preserves us in this saving faith through the gospel by his means of grace. The heart of faith leads a person to bring acceptable sacrifices to the Lord, willingly and with sincerity, because he loves the Lord Christ. Abel willingly, out of faith, brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. He brought the best and the first. We, the faithful people of God in Christ, bring our best sacrifices to the Lord generously, willingly, sincerely, because we love the Lord and because we are grateful for the salvation that he freely gives. Question, what are the acceptable sacrifices we offer to the Lord, those which we, the best that we can bring and as much as we are able? 
Well, the answer obviously is that our sacrifices are not the animals and produce that we bring to church and set on the altar and set them on fire. Of course not. In the New Testament, those kinds of sacrifices have been brought to an end by the ultimate, fulfilled, completed, redeeming work of Jesus Christ. There, are, there is no reason for sacrifices anymore. The ultimate sacrifice has been made once and for all people. The sacrifices we bring to God today certainly include our monetary offerings, that, that money that we put in the offering plate that re represents our lives, the time that we spend to earn that, that money. But it also includes our time and our talent and all of it a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We dedicate ourselves to God in service to him, motivated and empowered by Christ. The account of Cain and Abel teaches us that an acceptable sacrifice to God is one made out of the heart of faith. And we thank God that he himself has given us such a heart that makes our, our sacrifices acceptable because the sacrificial lamb of God was given for us. Isaac Watts says it very well. We sang it. Not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give the guilty conscience peace, wash away the stain. But Christ, the heavenly lamb, takes all our sins away, a sacrifice of nobler name and richer blood than they. Believing, we rejoice to see the curse removed. We bless the Lamb with cheerful voice and sing his bleeding love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>